In today's video, I just put together how we make our bathtub gardens because I'm so happy with them. This is such a great, great thing to have as a raised bay garden in Florida. Uh, we have a few of them. I will show them. I'll show how I fill them, how we hook them up, all this stuff, the advantages, the disadvantages. I can't think of any yet. So let's get going. This is my little bitty bathtub garden. Those are two tubs and they've been doing beautifully, especially with the leak. I already took the big leak out, but look at this. Whatever soil's in there stays in there. It's not like in the sandy ground where whatever you put there, it'll just turn up into sand again. And I'm so happy with these that we will be turning another spot into a bigger bathtub garden. Here is a load of tubs, two, four, six. There's another one that's not on here. They were five bucks each. They are in pretty decent shape and they will go over here to make our new tub garden, which is right in front of the back porch. So they're sitting around like we're going to open a spa soon and the bottom construct is done. Basically, we just laid out uh, some 4x4s four and then some 2x2s, two 2x6s. Two you would think 2 and 2 makes 4, but in the lumber business, that's not the case. Which is good because we will have the drain on the right side and we want an extra little slant and this gives us another half inch or so for a slant so they drain well. Now it's time to set them up. And here we are, <laughs> the new spa is aligned. This looks pretty ugly from this side. We'll put some lattice up there or maybe some roofing metal. And once they're filled up, they're not that white anymore either. And here you can see the slant. It goes down to the right. A little more than the usual tub set in the house. And also they're elevated because if we put them down without elevation, then the plug won't drain. It would just sit on the surface and then we'll have flood beds. That wouldn't be good. Sun's hitting it. I think that's pretty good. Now it's time to fill it up. So we already did a little bit of landscaping. It looks nice. These pavers we had laying around, same with the bricks. And then here I planted bulbs, random bulbs from all over. And now, well, we all, we're already through in some yard waste. But before we can fill these really up, we need to do something about the drains. So right now the drains are just bleak holes like that. And of course everything would run out, um, especially with our soil that always has sand in it. So we'll build these little nests around it. To build that up, I use um, double screen, the thing, the window screen, the tight one, and then uh, more hardware cloth kind of screen that has bigger holes and I also need rocks and then some bricks on top because another screen is going over the rocks like this let me show you so the first screen that goes on is the tight one that's double then we'll put on the second one that's a little wider and then Put a good handful of rocks there. My preference would be gravel, but it's Florida, so it's a little hard to get. And these we just had around the house anyway. And once this is a nice little nest, this goes over it. And then we we'll take some oh, broke. bricks and secure this down. So this should drain really good now without clogging everything up too soon. And to catch the uh, drain, because the stuff comes running out, we use these oven roaster things that are really inexpensive. They go underneath and then what comes out is good juice because it's from good soil eventually and I can use that to make compost tea and to use to fertilize the tubs over and over again or to fertilize something else. 
So this tub is, I think, two years old, maybe. And I just harvested the last of the leeks, the little spindly ones. And I'm getting ready to put sunchokes in there. But I want to show you what this looks like after two years. First of all, the leeks are great for soil building because they leave all these this root mess behind. It's not so dense that you can't plant in it. But of course, it's organic matter and it'll compost down. And all the way down here, this is where we had the wood logs in it before. It's hard to get on camera, but here's a piece of bark. It's the worms are in it too. It's just has water in it, it's moist, and it's starting to compost. So the more you put in there, if you get away with it, you can put it in all the way up here, like we did on the new ones, and then just put soil in it. And every year, the, the wood on the bottom will compost more and more, and eventually you have a tub like this. And because it's Florida, if you put good soil like this, good compost on the ground with the sand, it'll be gone in less than half a year. In the tubs, it stays in because it's controlled. They're awesome. You also don't have as many pest problems, especially fire ants. They can't get in because the drain is elevated. And um, voles. I have some real vole problems. And here is how I fill it. These are fresh logs. This is sugarberry. So I have them stacked in there. But then in between, I also have the older, more rotten wood because I want this to hold the moisture so it just doesn't run out. Um, this also starts nicely for decomposing. And then, of course, any yard debris you have. You can fill in the gaps with newspapers or egg cartons. The more gaps you fill in, the, uh, the less it will sink in the end. It will sink over time anyway because the wood's going to rot. But initially, whatever you put on top will go into the gap. So it's good to make sure they're kind of stuffed already. Um, a nice load of hardwood wood chips, bark mulch, works good for that. If you don't have that, hay is all right. You can make hay balls. And then to shove them in, all this eventually will create nice soil and then if you have some potting soil left over fill that up so if you have a, the funds to fill your tub or tubs with some nice bought in compost by all means go for it it's a lot quicker than this but if you don't and I don't then the slow composting method works just as well this is essentially a hugel culture, which is so popular now in permaculture. Um, usually they build them above ground. In Florida, you build them in ground. Otherwise, it's just going to dry up and wash off. The idea behind it is the same thing. You get wonderful soil and you have a great way of using your yard waste and in a little bit your kitchen scraps. They eat plant matter, leaves. Just remember when you're building this, go from the big on the bottom to the thinner on top. And this looks like really high now, but it's not because it'll settle so much more by the time I have more composted in there. And eventually we'll top it off with something yummy for the plants. Now I'm not gonna attempt to grow carrots in this <laughs> because they would hit those big things in there in no time and of course it would stunt them but you know for lattice and until it starts deteriorating this is perfectly fine it's when it looks sort of kind of field it's a good, good height that's when I start using green stuff kitchen scraps So when the height is the way I like it with the roughage, that's when I put just dug up dirt in there and then I wash it, wash it into the cracks. So 
this has all been washed in really well now. I think most of the nooks and crannies are filled in. And this is when we put in the one commodity we bought in, and that's mushroom compost. Now fill that up to the top and then start planting. Two out of six are now filled in nicely to the brim. Um, and now what I do, that's just because I happen to have it, is put a little biochar in it. Because on the top couple inches, once this is in, it holds water so nicely that it doesn't dry out on the top that quickly. And I'll just rake this in until it's no longer visible. We did a semi good job. This is homemade, so it still has big pieces in it. The big pieces will eventually all float on top, but the finer stuff incorporates nicely and it stays there. It doesn't go away. It's like terra preta in a bathtub. <laughs> Should have thrown some clay pieces in it as well. Now, of course, over time it'll sink. I think I said that a couple million times already um, because it decomposes. And speaking of decomposition, the wood will tie up some nitrogen while it decomposes, especially if it's still greener wood, which I have in there. So it's good to have a one beat up watering can and ask the males in the house to please pee in the watering can and then dilute it a little and just keep watering this with urine. It adds good minerals and it adds nitrogen all in the right um, combination ratio. Ratio is the word. Um, just make sure you're not on any medications like antibiotics and whatever. We're all medication free so we can use that. And if you have reluctant males that do not want to participate, they are female urinals. Use this, put it in the can, dilute it with water, apply it to your garden bits. It's super easy. Sunchokes are in. There's a little bit of wood ashes I put down and now a layer of mushroom compost on top. This tub is nice and full. The only thing I need to take care of is the hole. I hadn't done that previously because it wasn't full. It doesn't really overflow because it's not clogged up, but stuff comes out when you work on it. A quick fix for the hole is a plastic lid, sour cream, or... There we go. Yogurt, anything works. It'll still let some water drain out, but you won't get the chunks out of it. You can go fancy before you fill it and silicone it to it. Or you can get some of that wire um, mesh thing that's green and silicone that to it. But that's all I'm doing to it. It's not necessary to make it all super cool. And that's it. Three weeks later. I filled them March 6th and now things are coming up. Here's my beautiful snow pea hedge. <laughs> These are guarded off because they are for seeds so the kid can't eat them. I did stick some zucchini, cocosal and uh, straight neck yellow squashes in here. I don't, I didn't think they would do so well because really they're only like three or four inches of soil. But they look quite healthy and they even went through that last freeze with only a bucket over them. And um, these are calendulas. Then I have some love in the mist, zinnias. This is black seed, nigella sativa. Those are, oh, what are they called? Something. <laughs> and uh, these guys to deter the pests if they help. But it's really just flowers for um, breaking in the soil and getting the roots down and mixing it all up and looking pretty for now and then come fall I will put my fall vegetables in there those are some kohlrabi that were left over that didn't fit in the other thing I think it's way too hot for them already but we'll see what they do so I think this looks quite nice I love coming out here um, the planting is easy you don't have to bend over they do not get as hot as regular rice beds, in my opinion, because see on this side we didn't put the lattice up, so it's open, there's air going through, and because they're white they don't they don't even heat up as much as the black planters uh, do, like the pots and, and the big big old bins and all that stuff. 
So this is pretty neat. I'm happy with it. So happy that we that we put in two more along the greenhouse. One's going to be for my asparagus. That's not happy in the ground because the soil just always turns bad and I can keep it nice and rich in this. And the other one maybe to break it in some jungle peanuts. Already accumulating the stuff for it. And here are more tubs yet <laughs> waiting for me to find the place for them. And I'll make good use of them, no doubt. Thanks for watching. Get yourself some tubs.